here was what you were talking about, Brian, when you said that uh, the Varsity Blondes and Julia Hart's best moment was coming up. Tony Schiavone is now there with Griff and Pillman and Julia Hart on the ramp. She's just a cute, just an adorable little thing. Just cuter than a brand new speckled puppy. However, again, Tony asks Griff a question. Griff says two words. The lights go out. When the lights come on, Malachi Black has appeared there in front of them. I would estimate about six feet in front of him. And he blows the mist at Julia Hart. But he's too far away. And it doesn't get there. She screams and sells it anyway and drops to her knees in pain while the lights go back out. And then the lights come back on and Malachi Black is gone and they have left poor Brian Pillman there kneeling next to her with absolutely nothing to say otherwise than somebody get somebody. <laughs> and that's a quote, folks. <laughs> because <laughs> who's producing this? Who's doing the walkthrough? Who didn't tell Brian Pillman how to react? Who didn't have referees and security and or the doctor dr Sampson on staff ready to run in who didn't tell malachi black again to get closer to his intended victims because the mist will not go that far who who is the question i have thought this whole segment would be a good idea after the second blackout malachi black's gone the lights come back on and as I said, there's poor Brian. Griff ran off somewhere. At least he wasn't on camera. Thank God. Julia Hart is screaming and, and trying to cover her face kind of with her hands so that you can't tell that there's absolutely no black stain anywhere in her eyes on her face. Pillman had taken some that got on his hand and tried to wipe it on his face because he kind of sold it at the same time. But it was more like a, a smudge on the side of his head. And he's just left there to have the fake anguish. And while she's screaming and crying, he's that's when he's going, somebody get somebody. After the second blackout, when Malachi Black was gone, the lights come back on again. This wouldn't have cured the fact that it was obvious the mist missed her because there was none on her face. But couldn't Brian Pillman have scooped her up? like a baby in his arms, like the mummy carries the fucking reincarnation of his princess and look up and, and Stella or something, right? And screaming for revenge as the referees and the doctors converge. And, and if you've ever been pepper sprayed, which I have, you don't just fucking cry and put your hand up to your forehead like oh i've forgotten my shopping list you're goddamn you're blind and you're miserable and it's burning and you're not acting like that and nobody around you is just kneeling there going somebody get somebody shouldn't somebody have brought some milk which is what you use in your eyes when you've been pepper sprayed shouldn't someone have been this poor cute little Teenage girl, somebody could have been more broken up about this. It was phony as a football bat. And so every time that Malachi Black does this, he gets himself less over because he can't do it, doesn't know how to do it. Nobody's explaining to him how to do it. And it's not, get, it's not coming across. And they're not selling it afterwards. 30 great minutes and an hour and 15 minutes of the stench of grisly death on this program. He has fucked up every missed spot he has had so far. He was nowhere near them. It's ridiculous, the idea that it's one thing for his entrance. For him to do a run-in, the lights go out, he does that, and then someone said, oh my God, he just hurt that woman. Quick, turn the lights out so we can get out of there. Why? Yes. It makes yeah. no sense. Her selling... Give her credit. She was doing as well as she could, but there was no black on her face at all. But Pillman Jr., 
He deserves the Academy Award for bad acting. What the hell was he doing? What was he I doing? Feel, I feel so bad. They just left him there to twist in the wind. You need to tell people how they should react. You need to have peripheral players to run in and create the chaos. You need to walk through this with everybody. And the mist is inexcusable. One time, yes. Anytime after that, when you're missing the mist, that's inexcusable. Either get it right or don't do it. And I learned that the first time I threw powder on Mid-South Television, I've told this story, but Junkyard Dog and Hacksaw Duggan against the Midnight Express, and I'm throw, supposed to throw powder in Junkyard Dog's eyes, and it was the middle of the summer, and they had these giant six-foot exhaust fans because the Irish McNeil was not air-conditioned, and the way Dog took his bump, lined up, whatever, I had to jump up and throw into the current. And the God, it, the fans caught the powder in midair, and I was only three feet from Dog. And f blew it back at me to the point where it dropped on the mat, and Dog went down and had to crawl and rub his face in the powder on the mat to get it on his face. But he was quick thinking. But after that, I always I check the wind, get the meteorological report, do whatever I need to do to make sure that the gimmick gets to its intended victim. This It was brutal. And then you do something like that, it buries the announcers. Because they're having to sell what people obviously saw didn't happen. Anyway, 30 great minutes and an hour 15 of horse shit, and we're on the main event.